Fellow Americans, have you ever stopped to think, what if money becomes worthless tomorrow? I'm here to talk straight to you about something critical, bartering. When the world as we know it crumbles, what's in your garage, your basement, could be more valuable than a fat bank account. We're diving deep into the art of barter, what you need to survive when the dollar bill is just a piece of paper. You see, not all stockpiles are created equal. In sunny Florida, a bottle of water is just another drop in the ocean. But in the blistering heat of Arizona, gold. Pure, liquid gold. But it's not just about hoarding. It's about outsmarting. Making every trade count. Getting what you need by giving up the least. It's a dance. And the music's always changing. What's valuable here and now might be worthless tomorrow. And vice versa. It's all about adapting, being one step ahead. So what should you have in your arsenal of trade? We've narrowed it down to the nine crucial barter items and categories. Trust me, you don't want to skip any. Missing out could mean the difference between thriving and just surviving. All right, folks, let's get down to brass tacks here. The king of the hill when it comes to trade goods, once the greenbacks are just good for kindling? You guessed it, salt and sugar. These staples are as good as gold, sometimes better. Picture this. There was a time when salt was literally worth its weight in gold. Can you believe that? And sugar, it's right up there too. We could toss in some other spices to sweeten the deal, but let's be real. Salt and sugar are where it's at. They're like the bread and butter of survival. Salt, in particular, is crucial. If you're miles away from the nearest ocean, or a salt mine's just a figment of your imagination, producing your own salt is going to be a tough route to hoe. Best to stockpile it. Now, why am I all gung-ho about salt and sugar for bartering? Simple. They're immortal. Spend a hundred bucks on them today, and you won't be fretting over them turning to dust. You're not trapped in this cycle of shelling out another hundred every year just to keep your trade goods up to snuff. Plus, you can play it by ear with the quantities. Need to sweeten a small deal? Hand over a few ounces. Big trade? Break out the pounds. It's all about the perceived value. And let's not skirt around another truth. We live in a time where folks are hooked on their flavors. Sweet or savory, we're all chasing that taste. Nobody's keen on chowing down on bland grub. So sprinkle a little flavor into someone's meal, and you've just made yourself indispensable. Think about it. I'd wager that 95% of homes in this great nation have that iconic one-pound can of salt and maybe a five-pound sack of sugar stuffed in a cupboard. But that lone pound of salt? It'll disappear before you know it, especially if you're breaking a sweat more than usual. You're going to need it, and not just a sprinkle, especially if you're living off something simple like rice and beans. Salt transforms those staples from mere sustenance to something you can actually enjoy. Fact is, not many folks think to store extra, which is precisely why having a stash makes you the person with the goods everybody needs. When it comes to prepping, there's an item that doesn't always get the attention it deserves, ranking at number two on my list of must-have barter items. Feminine hygiene products, toilet paper, and let's not forget diapers. It's an oversight that happens a lot, probably because prepping is often seen as a guy's domain. We're all about the guns, knives, and camo, right? But truth be told, this isn't just a man's world. Plenty of women are just as invested in being prepared. And it's crucial we remember their needs, too. I've got a wife and understand firsthand how vital these products are. They're not just essentials. They're top of the list for us. We've even gone as far as stocking up on reusable options, thinking ahead for times when disposables might not be available. And it's not just for our own use. These items are gold for bartering. You might not have a baby, but having a stash of diapers could be a lifesaver for someone in your group or a valuable trade item. And while we're on the subject, let's not overlook the importance of condoms too. They might not be needed by everyone, but they're a wise addition for preventing unforeseen complications in tough times. Toilet paper is another no-brainer. Here in the U.S., we might take it for granted, but it's a daily necessity. This is something you're going to use every day, making it a crucial stockpile item, not just for personal use, but also as a potential barter item. Now, it's surprising, but many don't keep more than a month's supply of feminine hygiene products on hand. They're usually tucked away under a bathroom sink or scattered between car glove boxes and purses. That's why they're such a key item on my list. In times of need, having these products can make a significant difference, not just for personal comfort, but also as valuable trading commodities. So yeah, that's why feminine hygiene products, toilet paper, and diapers are solidly at number two on my prepping list. 
They're the unsung heroes of survival gear, crucial for both personal use and as barter items. Number three, coffee. Now you might be thinking, coffee, really? But hear me out. This little bean holds more power than you might realize. Just like salt and sugar, coffee is one of those universal pleasures that cross cultural and economic boundaries. It's not just a luxury. For many, it's a daily necessity to kickstart the day. Why is coffee a prime barter item, you ask? First off, it's shelf life. Properly stored, coffee can last a long time, making it an ideal candidate for stockpiling. And in a world where the usual comforts are scarce, the value of a cup of coffee skyrockets. It's a morale booster, a comfort in tough times, and let's not forget, a source of caffeine to keep us going. Moreover, the demand for coffee doesn't wane. Think about the early morning rush at your local coffee shop. Now imagine that demand when you can't just pop down the street to satisfy your caffeine fix. Having a stash of coffee beans or even instant coffee can make you a popular trader. But here's the clincher. Coffee's bartering power isn't just in its consumption. It's in the ritual, the sense of normalcy and comfort it brings in uncertain times. Offering someone a cup of coffee in a world turned upside down is like offering them a moment of peace, a reminder of better days. That's something people will trade valuable items for. So while we stockpile our salt, sugar, and yes, our feminine hygiene products, let's not forget about coffee. It's more than just a drink. It's a currency of comfort in a world where the value of traditional currency has faded away. Number four, ammo. Now, I hear a lot of folks say, I'd never trade away my ammo. But let's be real for a moment. Imagine you're in a tough spot. You or someone you care about is really hungry or maybe sick. And the only thing Joe down the road will trade for his life-saving antibiotics is some 5.56 ammo. In that moment, you bet you're going to reconsider holding on to that ammo. This is why ammo is often likened to a universal currency in tough times. It's compact, valuable, and let's face it, essential. That's why I always keep an extra stash. Not just for me, but understanding that despite my best intentions, I might need to trade it. And that's a hard truth in the world of preparedness. Never say never. You don't know what tomorrow might bring or what you'll have to do. And let's talk about who you trade with. For me, it's about trust. If my buddy Lewis needs ammo, I'd help him out in a heartbeat. Trading ammo in my eyes is something you do within your circle, with folks you know and trust. Trading outside of that circle? That's a risk. You could be giving ammo to the wrong hands, and that could come back to bite you. Also, let's not forget about the type of ammo you stock up on. Stick to the common calibers. Nobody's going to be looking for that rare .32 auto when things get tight. Keep it to the common stuff, the kind of ammo that's universally needed. And hey, I get it. Working in the gun industry, I get all sorts of ammo for testing or demos. If it's not something I use, I store it. You never know when it might come in handy for someone else. So, yeah, ammo takes the number four spot on the barter list for good reason. It's all about being practical, staying prepared, and understanding the value of what you've got. Number five, food and water are essentials, right? I mean, they're basics. We all gotta eat and we all need to drink. It's pretty clear cut. Among everything we've discussed, these two are non-negotiables. Sure, you can push the limits a bit, maybe a few days without water, though not recommended, and perhaps a week without food. Those survival books always throw around the 30 days without food thing, but let's be real. Your energy tanks, and before you know it, even simple tasks become monumental efforts. Now, when it comes to food, it's all about being practical. It doesn't have to be gourmet. A large bucket of beans and rice, portioned out for bartering, can be a gold mine. It's not just about swapping food for other items. It could be for labor or skills. Picture this. Someone's digging ditches or cleaning out your space in exchange for some basic sustenance. Especially in places where water's hard to come by, like the desert regions, its value skyrockets. It's fundamental. And don't forget about water purification. Filters, chlorine tablets, iodine. Those are crucial too. Having food and water stocked up is just smart planning. It's something you'll use regardless, so it's a no-brainer to include in your preparations. And when it comes to bartering, you don't need to give away the best stuff. Just have something set aside for trade. It's all about foresight and being ready for whatever comes next. So, for everyone tuned in, this is your reminder to think ahead and stay prepared. Number six on our list has to be tools, specifically multi-purpose hand tools. 
Now hear me out on this one. In a world where money has lost its value and we're back to the basics of bartering, being able to repair, build, or maintain is going to be critical. Whether it's fixing a leaky roof, tightening up loose bolts on a shelter, or simply opening up canned goods when electric can openers are long gone, having a set of reliable hand tools can make all the difference. We're talking about items like a good, sturdy hammer, a multi-tool with various attachments, screwdrivers, pliers, and saws. These aren't just tools. They're your tickets to independence and self-reliance. Imagine being the only person in your neighborhood with the means to repair things when they break down. You've just become one of the most valuable players in the game of survival. The reason why multi-purpose hand tools take the number six spot is their versatility and enduring value. These aren't items that will run out or expire. With proper care, they can last for generations. In a pinch, they can be used for a variety of tasks, making them indispensable in a world where you might need to be a jack of all trades. Moreover, tools are something everyone can use, regardless of their situation. They don't require any special skills to start with, just a willingness to learn and the need to get things done. And in a barter economy, the ability to offer repair services or the use of your tools for someone else's needs can be a game changer. It's not just about the tools themselves, but the opportunities they represent. Building. Fixing. Creating. Number seven, we've got batteries. The kind of item that truly lights up the importance of being prepared. Stephen Harris, a guru when it comes to backup power solutions, always says, When there is no power, a little power goes a long way. And folks, truer words have never been spoken, especially in scenarios we dread. Like EMPs, where the grid goes dark and we're left to fend for ourselves. Imagine, if you will, the profound difference a few batteries can make. A simple set of batteries slipped into a flashlight can turn a pitch-black night into a manageable situation. Or, think about the utility of a battery-powered ham radio, connecting you to the outside world when all other lines are down. This isn't just convenience. It's a game-changer, offering safety, communication, and a semblance of normalcy when everything else seems to have gone sideways. Now, the prepared among us might boast about their rechargeable batteries and solar panels, and rightly so. But let's not forget that the majority of folks out there have a drawer somewhere with a neglected flashlight, its effectiveness solely reliant on those precious AA or C batteries. These are the people who will be in dire need when their last battery fizzles out, making batteries a hot commodity in any barter situation. Personally, I focus on stocking up on AA and 8AA batteries, primarily because they're what I use most in my gear, particularly flashlights. D cells are reserved for those beefy streamlight lanterns I rely on. And yes, while I've got a good stash of rechargeables for personal use, it's the alkaline versions that I'd be willing to part with. But here's a pro tip. When it comes to long-term storage and reliability, lithium batteries outshine their alkaline counterparts. They're pricier, sure, but their longevity and resistance to corrosion make them a superior choice for those critical items you simply cannot afford to see fail. But why stop at the common sizes? Ever think about those specialty batteries like the CR2032, a staple in most optic devices? Stockpiling a handful of these could make you the go-to person for anyone in need, especially if they're looking to power up a high-end optic like a Trigicon RMR or an Aimpoint. Having the right battery could just be the leverage you need for a significant trade. Number eight on our list of indispensable barter items is fuel specifically portable types like propane and gasoline. In a world turned upside down where the conveniences of modern life are thrown out the window, fuel becomes a lifeline. It powers generators, stoves, vehicles, and can be the difference between staying put and getting to safety. Here's the thing about fuel. It's not just about keeping the lights on or the house warm. It's about mobility and flexibility in the face of uncertainty. Got a generator? You're going to need gasoline to keep it humming. Rely on a propane stove for cooking? That tank isn't going to refill itself. And in a pinch, being able to offer someone a few gallons of gas or a propane cylinder could secure you vital supplies or services. Now, storing fuel comes with its own set of challenges. It requires safe handling and storage solutions, and there's always the concern about shelf life, especially with gasoline. However, for those who plan ahead, fuel stabilizers can extend the lifespan of stored gasoline making it a viable barter item for longer than you might think. 
What makes fuel a top-tier barter item is its immediate utility. In a crisis, the ability to offer someone the means to cook their food, heat their home, or power their vehicle could be invaluable. It's a commodity that, while volatile, is universally understood and needed, making it a powerful bargaining chip. Moreover, fuel's versatility amplifies its value. Whether it's powering a chainsaw to clear fallen trees, fueling a vehicle for a critical evacuation, or simply boiling water for safe drinking, fuel is the unsung hero of many survival scenarios. And for those who've prepared by storing fuel safely and sensibly, it becomes an asset that can be leveraged in numerous ways during bartering exchanges. In preparing your stockpile, consider including a variety of fuel types to cover different needs. Propane, for its part, is stable, easy to store, and can be used for heating, cooking, and even refrigeration with the right equipment. Gasoline, though more volatile, is essential for running most generators and vehicles, making it indispensable in a bind. Number nine on our barter essentials list is all about meds, antibiotics, painkillers, and even your everyday over-the-counter remedies like cortisone creams, aspirin, Advil, Tylenol, you name it. It's crucial to stockpile these in quantity. If you can secure prescription-grade items, that's a bonus. Here's the thing. Antibiotics will likely become a top-tier barter item. In today's world, we're so accustomed to popping by the doctor's office, grabbing what we need, and moving on. Plus, the pharmaceutical industry has us convinced we should toss out meds the minute they hit their expiration date. But here's a little secret. Many of these medications remain effective well beyond those dates. That means a lot of perfectly good, usable meds are getting thrown out. Meds that could be a game-changer for someone's comfort and health in a pinch. So yeah, don't just think about the prescription stuff. Those over-the-counter items like antacids? They might seem minor, but they can significantly improve someone's quality of life. That's why they're number nine on the list. Keep that stash growing. Thank you for watching.